this is Emily. Um, she's one of our DARE alumni, um, and she came on to help us with the webinar today. I have had anxiety for my entire life. There's like points in my life that I can point to where anxiety has just gotten really, really out of control. And I would say it was probably you know, seven years old and then at 15 years old. And then, you know, again, right before I started grad school. So I'm also a therapist. I'm a clinical social worker. I'm in private practice. Yay! Yay! Yeah. And then I got divorced and it was like the worst episode. So I was like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm like so desperate. And I actually was started following this woman, Gila Lyons, who wrote an article about DPDR. And she mm -hmm. also has a website. And at the end of her spiel on her web on her website, she says the resources that really helped her. And one of them was Dare. And so I got the book and I started using the app, but I was still so preoccupied with getting rid of the anxiety. And then I just and you know threw myself in <laughs> to it. And here I am now. It's been two years. What, what helped for you? What what cleared things up? What was In the beginning, it was the surrender to the fact that I had to stop focusing on getting rid of it. It's such a hard thing to like get into, but I knew that that was the right thing. Like I knew that I just kept wanting to get rid of it and it kept keeping me stuck. What would happen was I would get the zap. It's like the yeah. whoop, there it is. Yeah. Now I got the whoosh. The whoosh, that would be the wave. Yeah, <laughs> it's the thing, whatever whatever word you want to use to describe it, but it hits you. And what we're programmed to do is freak out yeah. about the whoosh mm -hmm. and the stuff. So um, it's how you respond to that. What grabs your attention and where you give your attention because they're two different things. Things that catch your attention are usually something that's a sharp contrast or it's different or it's, again, I was thinking about this this morning. I took a walk on the beach and it's like, the one shell that sticks out from all the other shells is because it's different. So I noticed that one first. Yeah. So the notice is not really the problem. It's right. what we do right after we noticed it. Mm -hmm. How involved do you get with the thing that caught your attention? When you decide to pay attention to the thing that you hate and try and get rid of it, there are endless opportunities for you to like try and fight it. Like you can right. get real creative mm -hmm. trying to get rid of the thing because you get desperate. Say like if you have like a library or um, like, like a whole library of thoughts of imagination of ideas. So you can always pull out a thought. You can always go in your brain card catalog and find, oh, what section are like the shittiest thoughts ever? But then we go, oh, there they are. Let's, and then we read those books all day long, trying to make them no longer in our library. That doesn't work. But if you're thinking deeply about this thing that you don't get to get rid of, that you're desperately trying to get rid of, it's the trying to get rid of a problem right. that is actually the problem. Your body is going to have sensations. That's just what bodies do. Mm -hmm. That's just mm -hmm. what they do. They have sensations constantly, all the time. Like I remember being on calls and like someone was talking about like having a certain sensation in their body and then and you were like, everyone to think about that sensation in their body. Can you find it? It's like, oh yeah. shit, I got it too. Oh no. There it is. I find, I promise you, everything anybody tells me. Oh, I feel kind of detached. And and it's just human nature to go, oh, do I feel detached? Oh yeah, kind of. And I find some form of it. It's notice and then like the label we attach to what we've noticed. The label is what's the problem because if it's, oh God, oh my God, I feel detached too. <gasps> Distraction seems fake and full of fear on fear. Engaging seems like you've accepted the fear and now you're looking elsewhere. Exactly. I'll give you an example. So I had to get an MRI for the first time. I, I was like, okay, I'm going to get an MRI and anxiety is going to be there. Like, right. So I show up and I'm just doing the thing, letting anxiety be there. Da, 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 da. I, I get put in the tube, which was the thing that I was like most afraid of. And then I saw these scratch marks, like these black, and I just started counting them. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
that that was my favorite example of engaging for myself because I was like, yeah. wait, that's what I wasn't trying to get rid of anything. Right. And it's it such, a, such a differentiation because like somebody else would say, oh, OK, I'm going to count the scratch marks. I'm freaking out. Get the scratch marks in desperation. Right. It's how you do whatever it is you do. Cause it's like, oh, anxiety is present. Yup. Okay. Now I notice this thing. What else can I notice? Oh, there's some scratch marks. So now I can choose between sending my focus to the present anxiety or sending my focus to these scratch marks. Exactly. In order to learn a new way, you have to like, let yourself do it the old way. Yes. without judgment, yes. perfectionist attached to and say, yes. oh yeah, that's me starting this process of going this direction. And kind of like, the more you let yourself do it and you notice it, the more you can start catching it earlier and earlier and say, oh no, wait, wait, it's not left, right, left. It's left, left, right. Yes. And someone asked like, when did you notice that like you, like a layer of anxiety started to uh, loosen? And I'll tell you when I really started to notice is when I felt a distance between mm -hmm. me and the old way of doing things. Yeah. And then you get to focus on like what's in your control is your actions, your words and your behaviors. We're so looking for problems. We kind of find every little bit of the of things that could be problems and stare at them, waiting for them to become problems with the anticipation and stuff. We have one foot in the present and one foot in the future. As long as she's fighting something here, as long as there's a here fight, we send her here energy for here fight. So some people are fighting back there, the past, and some people are fighting, but what if over there in the future, but everybody's presently fighting. And as long as you're presently fighting, your body will keep you in a presently fighting state. It's simple, it's not easy, but if you kind of just keep it simple like that and then see, what am I presently fighting? Am I presently fighting scorpions on my face? Keep right. fighting scorpions on your face. Cause that's right now fight for with right now energy for right now danger. Everything's here. But if something's not here, if something's back in the past and something's off into the future, not fightable. How do you use dare when you're experiencing physical sensations? The physical sensations are not the problem. You probably have a story attached to those physical sensations. And the story is some sort of threat or danger or this discomfort that lasts forever. Why is it back? So there's anxiety and physical sensations, both present. The dare is to help you let go of the fight of this stuff, mm -hmm. not to get through this stuff until the stuff goes away and then you can let go. That was another question that came up too. It was like, I'm doing well and I, it kind of fades away. And guys, this is the process. And then you get involved in something else and you kind of forget to find the thing, whatever the thing is for you. Mm -hmm. And then we go some version of, oh shit, I forgot to find the thing. Yep. And then we go, oh, shit, there it is. Cause then yeah. we go looking for it. And then we do some version of, oh my God, I can't believe I found this thing. Yep. I found it. Right. This is not a back and forth. Oh, I made progress. I didn't make progress. No, I made progress. It's like, oh wow. I just. I, ha I noticed I forgot to pay attention to this thing for 20 minutes. Look at me putting some space. Apparently I didn't treat this very strong, unpleasant thing as very um, important anymore. Fear in and of itself isn't dangerous either. It's just a feeling. It's just a sensation in your body. But the presence of fear is not the problem. I need to do anything. I'm just scared. Yeah. And that's and why you, just as important. It's right. Exactly. It's, and when you leave it alone, it just is like, oh, okay, bye. <laughs> right. One of the rules that I have for myself is like anything that came up for me that was like, oh, you can't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's going to bring up fear. I did it. And then you break that idea of like, I'm, I have to stay frozen because I'm frozen. Now we get scared of that scared response. And now we freeze because we're frozen. We're in the woods, right? We're in the woods together and you're like on this journey and I'm just like walking alongside you, you know, mm -hmm. and I've got a bag of tools in my bag. You got a bag of tools in your bag and we'll lay them out together and we'll be like, what's going to work? You know, it's like that. And exactly. I Powering rather than here, therapist, here's all my problems. Tell me what's wrong with me. So you can tell me all these things I can do to fix them and get rid of all these feelings. When you finally clicks like, oh shit, 
there's nothing wrong with me. The problem is that we've lost trust in ourselves.